in order to have uh, certain prayers met, especially the prayers in memory of somebody who passed away, 10 men are needed. This law has been around for almost 2,000 years since the time of the Talmud when it was codified. And the reason for that is believe the 10 men bring a strong voice and they open up the gates of heaven. Very often, I'm the 10th man. Sergei Kadinsky travels from his home in Forest Hills every Friday to spend the Sabbath with his grandparents at the Self-Help Community Services housing complex in Flushing. Kudinsky leads the Friday evening services at Self-Help's makeshift synagogue. When he moved here in 1907, there were more Jews in this apartment building. As you may know, this apartment building was originally designed for Holocaust survivors. But today it's open to everybody and Jews have been dying out, moving out. Some moved on to Florida. So today it's a little bit more difficult to maintain a congregation. While I walk on two legs, I can still maintain the synagogue. As the demographics of Flushing have changed over the years, the synagogue, which is comprised largely of Jews from Central Asia, has struggled for numbers. Mr. Mordechai's goal is to make sure that this is a religious but also a cultural center where ideas can be shared and current events can also be discussed. An important thing is to share the events of life, such as jubilees, of weddings, birthdays, and also memorials. Mr. Tsimbaluk, as the head of the veterans, what he does, he connect, creates concerts, writes articles, and, and keeps the community together to make sure that the stories are told. He basically tells them when to wear the medals, when to celebrate, and uh, to keep the memory of the war alive. Preserving the memory of the war is one thing, but maintaining a synagogue with minimal funding is something else entirely. The self-help organization receives plenty of charity, including from the Jewish Federation, but the funds, they do not trust the synagogue's members with it. So they always say, we don't have enough funds, we don't have enough funds. For example, we have two Torah scrolls, one of them is broken. It costs a very small amount to fix it, or for example, to have cookies, wine, you know, for sanctification. So we hope that the synagogue, that the self-help organization can trust the synagogue with the funds. As you can see, almost every item here has been donated by residents. Some of them are alive, some of them have passed away long ago, the building being almost 30 years old. So from my point of view, we don't want their sacrifices to be forgotten. And if a synagogue closes, what happens to all the plaques, the memorials? They're either thrown out or they're given to another synagogue. But something has to be done to, for these sacrifices. It's a very important part of my life. I have gone to shul all my, most of my life, and it's part of me, and I would be missing it greatly if I did not have this temple right here, because I cannot walk very well, and it would be a very difficult thing for me to get to the temple. If it rains or snows or anything like that, it's so easy to come down here. Even if you just don't feel just right, it, it, it makes you feel good being with the congregation. While all of the congregants appreciate the convenience of the synagogue, many of them are simply grateful to be able to practice their religion. Yaakov appreciates most strongly the freedom of America, where you can pray openly and discuss religion openly without having to go underground or having to hide it. In the Soviet Union there was some persecution and the synagogue was farther from the house. So here it's a lot more easier when it's in the same apartment building. The self-help congregants admire Kadinsky for his decision to help carry on their traditions. And the aspiring writer welcomes the challenge of leaving the Jewish enclave of Forest Hills every week for Flushing, where the population of Jews is dwindling. In my neighborhood, Forest Hills, Queens, on Monoway Street, there's like five blocks, four synagogues in a row. And on any given Sabbath, you could go to one, go to another, hear a good lecture, hear a good lesson, good singing, good service. And you feel, you know, what difference can you make? Sure, you count, but here you really count because here every little person's needed to keep a synagogue going. In Flushing, you don't have much kosher food. You have very few Jews here, very few who are even observant. So my grandparents appreciate it, and I hope that it continues and... and Make it, I think it really contributes to their health and to their life. I usually read the Torah before I come down at night so I could understand what they're saying and follow. I've been doing that for about 30 years now. 
In the beginning, I didn't know much. But every year, I found out something else in the Torah. As I get older, I know more. I love it here. I, I, I feel so good when we come here. It's just like living, living downtown again.